Last week on the Glass Cannon Podcast. It's not often that city folk venture all the way over to Thinland's farms. Especially lately where it's gotten so dangerous out there. As you say, there is a threat. We have been tasked by the, the Oak Stewards of Seven Arches to handle that threat. We've had a couple people, as of late, past month or so, went off, never came back. Uh, one of them was a, a married woman. What was her name? Maybelline. What's the husband's name? Gerald. Might we speak to your children? Asta sits on the ground to get like to their level, and she says, I like your drawing. <laughs> It's one of mommy's birds. Did your mommy draw birds too? Yeah, she'd draw birds. And um, sometimes they just weren't right. They weren't, um, she looks at Jim and he goes, worthy. Okay, interesting. So you go back uh, to the inn, Buggles. You see something in the middle of the room, a dead bird <laughs> and its wings have been like elaborately and purposefully broken. Artistic, maybe, it's horrifying. He's gonna start drawing exactly the bird as it lays before anybody <laughs> touches it. You're looking at this and you realize that this bird is a map, but it's also a clock pointing to a very specific time. The adventure continues now. Podcast. Uh, I don't know if I've said this publicly, but if you've listened over the years, you could probably do the math as to what our ages are. I'm 45 <laughs> years old. I'm 45. I was born in 1978, September 4th, 1978. Feel free to say happy birthday on social media once in a while. <laughs> but anyways, uh, I'm 45. I like to think I'm, uh, I'm hip. I've got three kids now. I'll learn to be hipper as <laughs> they get older. Thought, how hip you thought 45-year-olds when you were in your 20s? <laughs> That's how hip you are. Well, you know what's weird? It's like when you sidetrack. You're exactly. You're exactly that, that hip. Do you ever see like the cast of Cheers? And they're like, these people were all in their early 30s. Oh, yeah. Like George Wentz. <laughs> George Wentz. It was like, it was like 33. <laughs> <laughs> Things have changed. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm going to start a list of adjectives you've used to, to describe yourself. Hip is going to be one of them. Hip. The other is technologically savvy. <laughs> <laughs> I know I have a different uh, conception of what those words mean, but <laughs> I'm, I'm, it's a little tongue in cheek. I understand that I'm, I'm, I'm lost on the younger generation. I'm not hip. Uh, I'm, I'm a different kind of hip. However, I'm trying. I'm trying to learn. I'm trying to keep up with the Why? times. You're going to be dead soon anyway. What does it matter? <laughs> That's true. La Valley's live forever. Um, it's in our blood. What was I going to say? <laughs> Living forever is in your blood. One of the things I'm trying to get better at is, <laughs> is social media. We study you. We stink at it. I think it's one of the reasons we uh, nobody knows who the hell we are. We're, <laughs> yeah. we're not good at it. We're trying to learn. We're trying to get better. But just when I think I know what's going on, uh, a young whippersnapper like Kate Stamis <laughs> lets me know I have no idea what's going on. Yeah. I wish the cameras were rolling 10 minutes ago because we'll never be able to recreate <laughs> the conversation and the way it went down. But you said something to the effect, uh, 
<laughs> should we talk about which side of TikTok we're on? And Sydney was like, they, they don't know about that. That's immediately what she said to you. <laughs> the boys don't know what that means. Well, also, yeah. Kate, and Kate that was correct. It. Kate said it, and the studio went silent. <laughs> yeah, you guys looked at me like I had seven heads. It was just like crickets. And I was like, this isn't, yeah. you can't explain. You can't teach this old hip dog new tricks. But then when she said next, clarified it all. Right. I gave an example <laughs> of understood. one of the sides of TikTok and that I'm on. And you said that which side are you on? Some of y'all might know it. Some of you might not. Hamster Jim, a.k.a. To, Hamster Rave TikTok. To which I cannot I, get off of it. To which I replied something to the effect of like, is there only one other side? <laughs> <laughs> no, there's two sides of TikTok <laughs> and one is Hamster Jim. And then you said... I guess I'm on the other side. Whatever the other side is, you don't know I what hamster, by default, I'm on it. hamster rave TikTok is. Let's it, back the, the Brinks truck up uh, one more block. <laughs> what are, are there only two sides? No, listen. No, okay. no there are so many. This okay. is an amorphous, many-sided. It, it looks into your brain or. and it, it shows you what you are. Yeah back at you and you're like this is who I am and part of who I am is I like love, a black mirror I have love seen, have watching live streams of tons of hamsters running running on wheels wow. while like house music plays Kate has sent me that <laughs> this is your and there's a lot of this there's yeah. a lot of different people that put these clips yeah, up there's multiple hamster gym live streams and I, I get them all and okay. I watch them all I like I watch them do you qu clarifying question <laughs> Do you say, you know what I want to do right now? I, and you pull out your phone and you go to these? Or is this something where I don't eventually ever go to gets them. served it shows and you, you. stay? It comes on my, on my For You page, on my FYP. Okay. You guys have heard of the algorithm. You don't algorithm. have to talk to me like yes, I'm four years old. Yes, heard of the You got, uh, <sighs> you know. T TikTok basically has one of the best algorithms out there. It knows what you want to see and it serves it to you on a silver Listen, course. I've been I waiting. understand that concept, yeah. but that's all you want to no, see? No, 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 no. Listen, 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 listen. <laughs> I've been waiting for this topic and I have an ongoing notes app list so I can explain to you. So wow. Hamster Gym TikTok, Little Chef, which is the... <laughs> Which is the guy in like the the creepy like demon costume with like long limbs and he just like cooks food. <laughs> I, I still have to go Jasper back to Hamster Jim. Are you on Jasper I the Doll? Jasper the Doll something are, But too. are these just people you so follow on TikTok? I watched a live stream once of a guy running a marathon, but it was just him running back and forth in his apartment and he did 3,872 <laughs>, laughs. That's a side too. How many sides does this shape have? Is it really infinite? Like Infinite. Infinite. It's like looking in, in, into the void and having it look back at you. It's a fractal. For instance, for instance, my side of TikTok, a lot of what I get shown, that's what I mean when I say my side right. of TikTok, a lot of accidents, a lot of really bad People accidents. Hurt. You, you don't even know. You don't know if they survive. You don't really know what's going on. They're out of context and they're scary. That's one. Two. Hang on. Mis Is this because one time you searched yes. for that? No, no, no. One time I was shown it and I watched it for a little and too she long. She watched it for a second before, <laughs> before I watched oh, it for a going. little oh, too so long. You are long. twisted. Second thing I get shown, mysteries. L you know, the Loch Ness Monster, uh, mysterious buildings. Who got hurt in this accident? Yeah. <laughs> They're kind of in the same- Kate Walker's clips? Kind of in the same vein, which, yeah. Which bones were broken? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's fun. I get shown a lot of mysteries, a lot of like folklore and legend stuff, and that's really fun. And then right back to a really bad motorcycle accident. Wow, I so. just any scanned through 20 videos on my FYP page. There was no connecting tissue between any. Because it doesn't know your FYP doesn't know me. It doesn't know yet. Yeah, it's like FYP. saying ATM machine. I, my FYP, my FIP? My, my FYP page. I'm a little... <laughs> <laughs> You're so stupid. <laughs> you said FYP. <laughs> Yes. FYP. Your FYP. The, the, the P is the page. The P is the right. page. Oh, well, <laughs> there's nothing. Here's a uh, a gopher being stood up in a shower. Yeah, if you Here's watch that too long. Here's comedian Lewis Black doing a set, uh, a plus size I model. I have um, uh, Doc uh, Holiday. golden retrievers just Actually, like that feels standing like still <laughs> in pools looking down at tennis balls. A lot of they mine never cats. get them, but they just look at them. Well, should we do an experiment? Like, should we all commit to just like checking out TikTok for yes. like, a week? No. Yeah. I do not. You're afraid. Yes, I am. I don't want to look into the void and have the void stare back. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to He's look into his ready. void either. But then you can see something so beautiful, like 20 hamsters running in different wheels in the dark with lights glowing and house music. Playing. Tunnel lady. I'll watch it on Kate's phone. Tunnel lady. When you said hamster rave, I in no way thought an actual hamster would be involved. Yeah, no, it it's, like it's, a, it's like live streams uh, inside of a hamster. Some of it is so uh, precious and benign and silly. And, and it's like, you just see the little butts running so so fast and it's just like oons, 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 you know skid what would be yours on tiktok what do you think uh, i don't know cape something with capes 
Probably. <laughs> <laughs> At this Is point. that cape side? <laughs> yes. I'm, oh, they're definitely. I'm is. on the cape side. For audio listeners, I found my cape. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm wearing it. <laughs> cape time. Is it warm? <laughs> yeah, it's nice. It's wool. Do you walk here in that? No. <laughs> I would go outside wearing this. If it gets cold, do you bring it up over your face? I could, totally. <laughs> so I want to go like... The shadow nose. Yeah. <laughs> it's a really nice cape. Yeah, it is a nice cape. I, I like that. Cape. It, is, it is. Yeah. Also, like uh, TikTok, made in China. That's where Nick uh, Shelton ordered it from China. <laughs> it's true. China. Yeah. Uh, well, I'd like to learn more about this. I want to know who's on the, the Glass Cannon podcast side. <laughs> That's a side. I, I right. You don't want to know. Around. I follow it on TikTok. I am. I get. I get shown everything. I get shown everything. Yeah. Are you getting more hamsters than glass cannon? Wait. What's the difference wow. between TikTok and YouTube and Shorts in the term in terms of like your side? <laughs> like, if if YouTube Shorts is sending me stuff that's like kind of re- that I see over and over again, is that a similar vibe, or is it is it just the algorithm's not as good? Like, I think. I think wait, before you answer, I have two things to say about this. One is that I also would like to know the answer to that question. And two is that you sound so old. I know. I know. I went into that being like, should I say this? Because it's going to sound so old. But then when Troy started the episode, my first thought about 45 years old was being in my early 20s or late teens, early 20s and playing basketball in like the, you know, in public courts. And when a 45 year old guy came to play in like knee pads and stuff, like I remember thinking they looked so old, like <laughs> bald and almost dead. And I was yeah. like, good for them for like trying. They weren't 65, like they were 45. Yeah, 45 yeah. Yeah. And so I was like, I just got to commit to this. this. This is who I am. I think the difference, and I, this may not even be true, but I think the difference is more people are putting more content on TikTok. So you get shown a wider range and more of it because people are constantly uploading. So I think too with uh, YouTube, you're mostly just getting stuff that you're already you're subscribed to, like channels you're subscribed to, which is not okay. It's what you think you want, not necessarily what you actually want. Yeah, what you don't even know you want. That's what TikTok is. Mm -hmm. I would also like to state for the record that Kate and I are the same age. Who are you stating this for? Wow. Yeah, whose record? The record that thinks I'm so old and that. (laughs) Well, you you were born older, George. (laughs) (laughs) i know it's like this like ongoing trope that like sydney and i are so much younger than all of you and i just know that you matthew and i are the same we graduated in the same year (laughs) of high school right yeah (laughs) Uh, it's not it's not records anymore it's cds (laughs) <laughs> yes. You got Francis. <laughs> yeah. I would like to state for the CD. It's like, just like an MP3 now. It's like they don't even use CDs anymore. You should say MP3. Get with the times. It's the 90s. Yeah, for real. So Sydney, you're the youngest. Yeah. But at least you're a high-powered attorney. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's the youngest, but she's not. High-powered attorney by she's day. She's dressed, actual place she's dressed by for night. the age she wants to be. I just right. took the bar for the 12th time. <laughs> That's not good. Maybe the lucky number 13. High-powered. <laughs> Thirteenth <laughs> time's a charm. I play an attorney on TV. Why won't they give me my license? I was just looking up that meme three days ago. What uh, meme? I'm not a doctor, but I play oh. one on TV, that whole bit. Because I forgot, because I remember that commercial like being on, but I didn't remember like what the commercial was for. And it was for Vicks nasal spray, I think. <laughs> and the doctor was this guy, he, it was a, the actor played a doctor in General Hospital. And then he had like some huge scandal uh, right after that and they replaced him. And uh, I shouldn't have started this story because I don't remember the end. <laughs> That was a commercial to begin with because then it became right. a, a, it was and one of the was first a, memes. It was, it was an early meme. Like where's the beef or whatever, yeah. what have you. Guys are you. really aging yourselves. Yeah. Where's the beef? Where's Tried the beef? I explain where's the beef to my son the other day. He walked out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't care about your beef. <laughs> about your beef. <laughs> the, one of the most famous books on advertising is, is about the where's the beef. It's called Hey, hey Whipple, Squeeze This. Or, hey Whipple? Hey Whipple. Whipple. Hey Whipple. Whipple. Yeah. Hey Whipple squeeze squeeze the Charmin. Yeah, it's basically, it's, it's like a looking at, at like a campaigns you think are annoying, but are actually really effective. Yeah. Among other things, it's also about the creative process. It's a good book. Well, I know what uh, side this banter falls on the first part of the episode. <laughs> uh, we'll be back after <laughs>
We're back. We're on the other side of <laughs> this episode. <laughs> Just keep digging deeper. Just keep deeper. digging dip, dipper. Dip. Digging dipper. <laughs> digging dipper. Digging dipper. Digging dipper. Dig dip. <laughs> that, can that go on your business card? <laughs> Trilla Valley. Professional dig dipper. Dip digger. Uh, oh I want to thank our sponsors. <laughs> Demi Plain. For bringing this VTT nonsense to you. And Norse Foundry. Skid, what about Norse Foundry? For all. Norse Foundry for all your fuck. <laughs> for all your That's random them. number generators. <laughs> for all your fuck. fuck. Right. Um, <laughs> we have the giggles today. I know. Oh, we God. haven't recorded together in a while. So we, we haven't hung out and it gets a little silly uh, and uh, not always funny for an audience to watch. But fun, <laughs> fun to be here. Fun some for of the, us. Fun some of the false us. starts were uh, quite scary. <laughs> <laughs> Glad we weren't recording. But uh, we're here now and uh, very excited. We, this is, uh, you know, this is actually our first recording of the year, even though uh, you guys have already watched four or five episodes. But we're going to be in Toronto next month uh, at the Great Hall. Uh, it might already be sold out uh, by the time you're watching this. Glass Cannon Live tour is raging through the new year. Uh, first stop in Canada is in Toronto on March 16th. And also, something I don't mention enough on this show is we have a subscription service. Go to jointhenache.com. It is your one-stop shop for all things glass cannon check it out we have content you can only get on jointhenache.com but i want to talk about last week's app because i kind of want to hear it from your point of view what you've learned over the last few apps as i know in my ivory tower back here what's Everything. going on i know you guys are still putting it together and maybe even frustrated by that but this isn't about your opinions this is about like the facts what do you know just the facts, ma'am. Just the, more the facts. I know, the less I know. Mm -hmm. Type yep. of thing. Yep. Um, the more you know, the less you know. Yeah. The more Troy will call us stupid for not knowing. <laughs> I would never. In so many words. I, I mean, think, I, I think okay. the most, the central kind of mystery so far is the missing, the missing moment. This is kind of the, the time that we've lost, like as a result of this, like these gates opening. These these time that we we can't remember. That's the main thing that we were sent out to investigate in the beginning. What's it's funny because like stuff like that can kind of get lost over the span of like the months that you play a game, and you get involved in like the minutia, like you know this on the way. But that that is like as a reminder, like that is like the thing that we're really supposed to be looking into. Yeah. And that's what led us to Seven Arches, right? Because we're looking for, uh, we're under the instructions of Dr. Riddleson, we're trying to find out more information about the missing moment, similar occurrences, research the Ayodara, and that led us to Seven Arches. Mm -hmm. Which led us to the Oak Stewards, who protect the area. Well, it essentially led us to Bolon, right. who it's, was a gatewalker and came back changed. And was an Oak way, Steward. And became militant against all... Humanity, basically. Except for humans, I think. Except for... No, no. All, all sentient life, essentially. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. like preferring only animals and plants. Like, oh, let well. them all live, but no one else. Because everyone else is ruining nature by just their very existence. You've been radicalized in his missing moment. Yeah, they've been he was radicalized in his missing moment. But he's the only other gatewalker we know about, right? Well, that we... With the missing besides, moment, besides all the people we know that aren't villains or yeah. ma masterminds. Like, we discovered that the Ayudara and Seven Arches weren't the real ones, and that, like, this right. mystical figure, uh, Kanipo, I always want to call him Kanipo. That's Kanipo <laughs> um, was, like, the original like person dog. who, like, made the <laughs> obnubulate curse and, like, maybe is the person who, like, caused the Ayudaras to open. I don't know if my brain just jumped there or if we were well, this that. Is a, but... a, a key thing is this is the reason Riddleson brought you here in the first place, why he gave you his most promising lead, the Glen Gary leads, is because this obnubulant curse. It doesn't bode well for us. can't have them. And you, <laughs> Matthew's can't character. Uh, <laughs> you know, the obnubulant curse is this curse that's been around forever. It's like you come close to seven arches and you're an elf, you shrivel up and die. But something that tied into the night of the missing moment is the curse was lifted. And so he wanted you to investigate that. As you've investigated that, you've found out a little bit more about this curse and that somehow this fey figure may be tied up in it. 
and ca- that you made a good point that we tested the seven arches. They're not the real gates. Yeah, that was that's a, why we went into the Wildwood and we found where the actual the real gate gates was. are. Like yeah. We had one task, but it's all like unraveling into yeah. like all this other stuff. Well, so then there was the shade wither key, which Bolon wanted to use in some ritual that we found out was maybe inspired by Kanepo and that Kanepo probably has this key. Right. Yeah. You found out that Kanepo, Kanepo uh, instructed Bolon to get the key. Uh, and so you were hoping you'd find Bolon and find the key, but it appears that Bolon gave the key to Kanepo. And it could be used for very nefarious purposes. In fact, we're concerned that that's about to happen like today, right? Like we're. Yeah. The, you are on a ticking clock. It's a, the, uh, the, well, the elders. Well, the clue we got is a clock. Yeah. The, well, that's, don't jump ahead, Skid. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> we're still on episode 14. Uh, but yeah, you, um, you were told by, uh, Lemma Feldthorne that the elder oak stewards determined from what they learned in Bolon's journal that you had probably three days and three nights before this was going down. There were sentences and before thoughts. Before what was going down? Uh, uh, we don't know something awful or maybe is it like something kind of specific. A localized apocalypse. Look, <laughs> like like a, like a tear in the space time continuum. Right. They they fear that with the shade wither key in the wrong hands, if this figure really does exist and everything they know about this, um, that this could all go down in three days and three nights and could be apocalypse. Is this because this place, this area, is so sort of tenuously? clinging to like material reality that makes it vulnerable to something like this? Yes, well now that you've spent some time in the Wildwood, you do know that the first world influence there is very strong. And so that is probably what leads the elders to believe we can't fuck around with this. Mm -hmm. Uh, We need people to go and and help us out. And so you've been doing that. You started by going to uh, a Gorga victim's house, Pa Mosby. Had a conversation with Pa Mosby that was semi-enlightening, but more importantly, you learned that both he and his son had this feeling of a figure always sort of uh, judging them throughout their life. Worthy or not worthy. Trying to deem what their worthiness was. The little boy thinks that a devil is trying to take him to hell. Brother Ramius talked to him and kind of dug a little bit deeper. Like he's uh, just looking for James Worthy. It could be that he's looking for- uh, Put that in the notes. Former Los Angeles Laker. One possibility. And then, we th- Worthy. <laughs> and then we went to Thin Lands Farms, we found more people had disappeared, in- including yes. this woman, Maybelline. And on your way there, you meet uh, a man named Malchior who is looking yes. for his friend uh, who has also disappeared. So there's this, uh, there's this feeling of there's disappearances going on. You get to Thin Lands Farms, which up until the point you had got there, it was kind of like, oh, maybe I've heard of that. Maybe that place exists. I don't know. Other people will be like, oh yeah, I've heard of that, but nobody ever goes there. You get there and it's like a Red Dead Redemption town, except everyone is gorgeous and like timeless. Clearly the first world influence has uh, infected this area in such a way that it gives everyone this sort of fountain of youth appearance. Now, question for clarification. So Thin Lands Farm is in Thin Lands, which is a place? Unclear. Unclear. So then my other question is, Nighthold is surrounded by Lightline. Nighthold is a first world place. John. Lightline is a first world, John? The light line is the demarcation it was between a series, the night world and the material. Plane. It was a okay. series of lanterns that served as a focus of enchantments to keep the, the, the realm, the night hole, which is a dark realm of the first world, from expanding. So from our understanding then as, as characters, Thin Lands Farm is close to Nighthold. That's the sense that yeah. you're okay. like getting. Cross-hatch. If not close to Nighthold, at least like close to perhaps the this, Thin Lands. Yeah. This fissure between the worlds. The Thin Lands. So the Thin we, Lands, which is on another plane, right? It and, and within the Thin Lands is, is Nighthold. You get the sense from uh, Bolon's journal that Kanipo's domain is the Thin Lands. Is the Thin Lands. Okay, and that so was my That question. must be a, pl- maybe that's what he calls it. Or, you know, you don't know. So then we investigated Maybelline's disappearance, talked to her family, and it turns out she constructed a, like a, a true to life diorama of the town. And had traced. And forest. And far, and the surrounding forest, and had traced all of these paths on there. And we walked a path and nothing happened. But it was, we think that she had walked this path when she disappeared. And then when we, last night, at, we went back to sleep at the saloon. Well, right before that, we discovered that the, pa- the paths that she's walking are in the forms of birds and bird wings. Bird. Well, her drawings. Or her drawings of birds are similar to yes. the paths yeah. or whatever. Like they, they cross over. So it was very bird uh, heavy. And she made her children draw birds. It was a whole thing. And, then when and we they up. also had to be worthy. The drawings right. had to be worthy. 
And then when we woke up the next morning, despite his setting a watch, we had been delivered some sort of message, a, a an artistically, as you put it, I'm making air quotes, uh, disjointed broken bird that upon closer inspection revealed itself not to be just a map, but also a clock. Yeah, and I don't want to uh, put salt in recent wounds, but it sounds more like something Lucky would have done just because she's a cat. Right, so yeah. you should think of it as a gift. Yeah. Maybe it is from Lucky. Lucky Maybe would not. have wanted you to have this. Yeah. Well, I, th I as I said at the end of uh, at the end of last episode, didn't make the cut. I don't know, but it was uh, that I think it's Maybelline or someone similar trying to communicate with us, uh, despite your very rude rejections of that. <laughs> That's a great idea, Matthew. Thanks, Cindy. I thought I said that. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, when I when I brought this up before we recorded, Joe tried to pretend like he did say that. <laughs> had to go That's, wait, how, to go that's to how I remember. <laughs> so this is what you've got so far. It's a lot of disparate. stuff. Things, but it seems like now where you're being... Where is the Thin Lands and where is Nighthold? What plane? Is it in the Shadow Plane? You believe it is a realm in the First World. Oh, that's right. Nighthold, so you is know. Is the First is World it... a realm like the Celestial Plane, is the... the Shadow Plane, the First World? Is it is the know? realm of the... What we learned from the tree. Yeah. The First World is a realm of the Fae. It's an inner sphere, a god's first draft of a plane that would later split into the Material Plane and the Shadow Plane. Hmm. It is a transitive plane. Are you, are you Googling? <laughs> <laughs> Did you just and, Google that? So yeah, yeah. I have the jacket on. And then the word after, I don't even know if I know that word, but I'll say it anyway. <clears throat> Did you Lexus Nexus this? It is a transitive plane coterminous with the universe. I'm a lawyer. Own it, own it. <laughs> <laughs> As a lawyer, you should know it's a transitive plane. Yeah. Before you say anything, it's a transitive plane. <laughs> That's your attorney. That's your attorney. <laughs> All right, well, let's take you back to the room here and you're all, you, you, you set a watch and somehow this bird just appeared there. No one saw it come in. So I imagine you're all examining this, trying to determine where it's leading you and when it's leading you. But maybe as you're, as you're looking at Can this- Can I suggest something? Yeah. This may not fit in with the narrative, okay. but maybe Buggles had the last watch and he drifted off to sleep even for but a few moments as, as this was happening. He failed at yeah. his job. Are you trying to fall on your sword for, so that Asta isn't really embarrassed? Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, someone had to lose their vigilance for, for at least like a split second for this thing to appear. Otherwise it's like, whoa, I'm looking at the spot. There's a bird there all of a sudden. So that, that would be my suggestion. Yeah, that. I would say if you were the last one up, that could absolutely have happened. But imagine you're just looking over at the table and you look there and then just a couple of seconds later you look and it's there. Okay. Yeah, so you think, wait a minute, did I just miss that when I fell asleep? And so that might be something you carry with you. You blame yourself. Well, what, if I, whoever did have the last watch, I'm saying it would be Buggles. It would have been it would have happened on their watch. Right, right. So, so it leaves you feeling, yeah, let's say it's you then, uh, canonically, and it must leave you feeling like, did I did I screw this up? Yeah, he's like, he's just like, wow, how did I miss this? What happened? Like, where did I fall asleep? What What's the deal? Especially as someone who's like dealt with missing memory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, yeah. we all have. I mean, right. this has got to be worse. Is this a symptom yeah. of the return of the Obnubulate Curse? Right. Yeah. The first symptom, perhaps? <clears throat> well, as you're examining this and you're taking it all in, I like to think maybe Zephyr is off to the side, uh, a little away from the others. Uh, if not fully physically, at least mentally. Maybe uh, something outside the window is catching her eye. Uh, uh, a flower, an orange flower. And we can see in her eyes that she's disassociating a little bit. Um, and as she does so, maybe she moves ever so slightly. And in the silence of that moment, uh, we hear a, a little clamor from the urn attached to her belt with Lucky's ashes. Instinctively, she rests her hand upon the urn to quiet it, and as she makes contact with it, her jaw clenches. And we just slowly come in on her, on her eyes, and then we come back out. But as we come back out on those same eyes, we see a younger Zephyr. 
She looks to be a, a teenager, maybe. It's tough, even with half-elves, to tell. Her eyes are a little lighter now, her jaw no longer clenched. And um, maybe she's humming to herself as she scrunches her face a bit and focusing on something that she's, she's making. We see that she's in the woods, just outside a, a place called Silver Strand Harbor. She has a bunch of orange lilies on her lap and an open book at her side. Looks like she's making an intricate necklace out of the lilies, and uh, the book at her side is open to a page that describes the significance of the orange lily, uh, especially to this place uh, during the springtime. If we zoom in on the page, you see the passage describing how uh, uh, the orange lily is used as a gift at the Awakening, capital A. It's an annual festival that's held in Silver Strand Harbor every spring. Looks like people give an orange lily necklace to someone who they wish to dance with uh, during the final celebration of the festival. She's working hard, scrunching her face. She finishes it, holds it up to the light to survey it, and smiles before putting it in her bag and heading back into town. We then cut to uh, another scene at the center of this town. It's very lively. Everyone's getting ready for the festival. Vendors are putting out stands to sell or showcase their goods. Games are being set up uh, for children and teens. There's a stage in the town square being constructed for live entertainment. Plenty of space around it to dance. And we see Zephyr again with uh, a boy about her age, another teenage boy. They're walking together chatting and laughing <laughs> maybe he's the same <laughs> maybe he's the same height as Zephyr uh, fair skin short dark hair light. how tall is Zephyr by the way um like 5'10 we're tall. She's, to oh. me she's tall yeah, yeah. that's tall he's 5'10 and a half <laughs> and uh, he's, he's wearing lifts he's wearing lifts <laughs> and uh, he's, he's talking to her and he says uh, remember that time, what was it, uh, five years ago when I dared you to let the pigs loose before the pig rankling competition? Yeah, I can't believe you dared me to do that. I can't believe you did it! It was pure chaos. There were pigs everywhere getting into all the food, knocking over Miss Evelyn's pottery and display. Miss Evelyn saw us laughing and then started chasing us, screaming, Ollie Zephyr, I knew it was you, and you were so scared. I was not. You should have seen your face. And then she finally caught up with you after you tripped and fell. And you were like, oh, oh, the dogs, I swear. Like the dogs can open pig pens. Maybe she playfully nudges his shoulder <laughs> and he just smiles and rolls his eyes. Well, they canceled the pig wrangling competition after that. I wasn't going to take the fall by myself. <clears throat> he tries to nudge her back, but maybe he misses and like nudges her bag. And when he does, the orange lily necklace falls out onto the ground. Uh, this boy picks it up and uh, his eyes go wide. Whoa, Zeph, this is nice. Zephyr maybe tries to grab the necklace back, uh, but this boy taunts Shoots her. Shoots two arrows. Give <laughs> me <laughs> <laughs> back necklace. my necklace. <laughs> They're playing like keep away a little bit. And he's like, oh, oh, he's just kind of pulling it out of reach. And he's like, whoa, hey, come on, around his back. Someone must have really got your attention, huh? Oh, you must have spent ages making this. Who is this for? Give it back. Come on. Not until you tell me uh, who you're feeling this type of way about. Maybe Zephyr finally just grabs it from him, takes the necklace back, and she looks down. Hunches at him in the throat. Spitting up one. <laughs> Gouges out one of his eyes with an arrow. <laughs> See you in hell. <laughs> End of scene. She, she, takes, she takes the necklace and she's like flushed and he's like, Zephyr, I didn't realize you were so soft on the inside. He's still trying to needle her. He pokes at her and she kind of shrinks and, and now he realizes he's making her uncomfortable. He's gone too far and he's like, I'm sorry, Zeph. I was, I was just giving you a bit of a hard time. And he puts his arm around her and gives her a little side hug. And they just keep walking in silence. And after a while, he's just kind of looking at her. So... Who's it for? <laughs> no one. I was just practicing. Come on. 
I know you didn't spend all that time making it for fun. You'd sooner join the church choir before you... It's for you. They stop walking, and Ollie, this boy, uh, looks surprised and just stops smiling. I... I I made it for you. What? No. <laughs> Seth, you're like a you're like a sister to me. Oh. I, and and I can't I can't I can't dance with you at the festival. You know how my parents feel about half. <gasps> well, I mean, well, what would they just, say? Just forget it. Just throws the necklace on the ground at Ollie's feet and walks away. Zephyr, wait! Come back! She's breathing harder now as the weight on her chest gets heavier. Her her vision is growing blurry from the, the dampness emerging from her eyes. The sounds of the people around her are getting louder and surround her, threatening to suffocate her as she searches for a way out. Her, her face threatens to betray her as the tears build up. She clenches her jaw to prevent the emotion from boiling over, and Ollie's calls just dissipate as she finally reaches the woods. Now maybe some time passes, and we see uh, young Zephyr again, but now with a more neutral face, jaw still clenched, eyes still glossy. As we pull out from her standing there, she's surrounded by people all dressed in black. Most of them are either weeping or have their heads bowed. And we hear a, a voice of a man somewhere in this scene saying, death comes for all of us in the end, some more sudden than others sometimes unfairly. Ollie Harrison may have succumbed to the fever, but not before bringing us so much joy and light to all of us. And that voice continues and gets echoey for a moment. Then as it becomes clearer again, the voice is the voice of Brother Ramius. Oh, whoa. Talking at Lucky's funeral. And yet again, we see Zephyr, neutral, jaws clenched, eyes threatening to tear up. And she walks up to the pyre where Lucky lays and places a single orange lily on her chest. The pyre lights, and we see the fire reflecting in Zephyr's eyes as a tear falls. When we come back to Zephyr in the room with all of you, Zephyr, you just hear this chatter of them trying to figure out this puzzle. Someone notices that Zephyr isn't quite there with you. Who's the, who's that person? Where's Zephyr? Zephyr. Zephyr. Pick up something what? and throw it at her face. <laughs> what? <laughs> An iron. Pick up a pewter cup. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, iron. A fire iron poker. <laughs> what, the bird? The bird, yeah, it's really creepy. <laughs> Did you even see it? Did you examine it at all? It's a, it's a, it's a map, and a, it indicates the time of the clock. It's also broken unnaturally. It's so strange. Yeah. Are you all right? Oh, yeah. Wake up. See a dead bird in the middle of the room. Now let's go figure out what it means. Zephyr, there's something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you seem to have lost your passion for the adventure. <laughs> Are there too many clues without enough without enough conclusion? You sound like you've seen an orange flower. <laughs> <laughs> it's very specific. That, he is a psychic. <laughs> I'm a psychic. I'm seeing an orange seeing flower. An orange flower. <laughs> that constru- that's a, like a classic skid joke construction. It never fails. Yeah. It never fails to get <laughs> What was the one? Oh, the- I'm trying to think of it. Oh, it was like, you it. look like you're thinking of my dead friend. Oh, that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, oh, that look. You're thinking of my friend Scott Parker. <laughs> 
<laughs> his friends of the pub. We were sent into a we were looking for a guy named Scott Parker. And this kid just walks in. <laughs> Cut right to the investigation. <laughs> I know that look. You look like you're thinking of my friend Scott, Scott Parker. Parker. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, All right, right. I was just here like, with Seth. That was just uh, a great guy. It was a fun game. Back to Zeph. Okay. She's not she's not there. Um I, do we need to talk about anything or uh, uh I think that the wings are a time, right? Yes. That's Indeed. what we're talking about. What time? What time? So how like what about it, the shape of it makes it look like a claw? Is it the way the wings are pointed? Like the yeah, so you, you kind of like Mr. Burns on the clock. <laughs> <laughs> you've kind of established that the the birds' wings and whatnot were a map. That's what led you to start to explore the woods. You see that construction again here, and you realize uh, that it's pointing you to a specific place in the woods. But upon further investigation, you see that it's also the because the way that it's disjointed, it, there's also another part of the wing that looks like hands on a clock, and it points to what you would think would be around 9 p.m. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure we might have done the right thing last night. We just need to do it at a certain time. You said that. You said that yesterday. Excellent, Zephyr. Well done. Asta is looking at Zephyr because Asta is, she's in her kitsune form and she's like looking at the bird with the broken wing, sort of from a natural perspective, a nature perspective. What type of bird is this? Is it local to the area? Like that kind of thing. But then she just starts looking at Zephyr and she, like everybody else in the room, just knows that Zephyr is sad mm-hmm. and just can feel that energy, like black hole in the room. And you just hear in your head, take these broken wings <laughs> and learn to fly <laughs> again, <laughs> learn to live so free. And then she starts not looking at Zephyr and she's kind of bopping her head. And we hear <laughs> voices sing. Um, but no, she, she looks at Zephyr. Um, and when everybody is back looking at the bird, um, she walks over. I'd like to talk to you today if you are available. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell just what? That that pulls out her planner? <laughs> the death look that Kate just gave me as Zephyr made me take pause as a player and yeah. as a character. Maybe uh, she doesn't want to speak. Uh, uh, Asta sounds says, like no. I'd like to. <laughs> I'd like to talk to you today. Okay. Hey, maybe now. Sure. Okay. Hey, why not? Do we need to leave? We're all just watching. <laughs> We're all just <Yeah>. watching. <laughs> <laughs> That's what, like I was playing Baldur's Gate three right now, and like they have these like kind of intimate conversations with some of the other people in your party, but like in all these shots, like all the other people in your party like, standing behind Damn them, it's like look, like, <laughs> especially so, especially like the horniest remarks, and then your whole oh, yeah. party is just standing there. And I have a mod, so I have like six people in my party. So it's like this like gang like looking in. It's just like what's she gonna say next? <laughs> okay, so yeah, we turn around. I'm going to walk with Zephyr for a moment while you examine the bird further. We're done examining the bird. We finished. Excellent. Perhaps we take it to what's-his-face's house. Gregor. (laughs) Clegane. What the hell's the guy's name? (laughs) What? The guy with the kid? Gerald. Gerald. Oh. Yeah, Yeah, because we need to, like... Compare it to the map. Compare it to the map. Yes. Compare it to the diorama. Oh, to her. To her. Okay, yeah. Fantastic idea. We should walk in that direction. Yes, let's go in and re-traumatize his children. The buggles. It's a suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> Not an order. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, yes. Well, uh, Talitha will gather the so, bird very delicately and place it in some sort of box or something that she fashions to... Uh, and it will carry, so it doesn't lose its shape or orientation. Well, Brother Amos has, uh, also has drawn it. Oh yeah, in its orientation and everything. So yeah, we have are you a good artist? Can you draw good? Yeah, you, roll for it. It doesn't really matter. You draw good. Or? He's not drawing yeah, like a, a 3D. You're doing a body uh, outline, a trace. No, he's a tracing. The, he's tracing the bones as they relate to the map, and the and then the. He's the doing the bones. Clock. What do you think? Crafting? Anatomical? It's just drawing anatomical. Birds. I want you Is to it draw hard? it right now, live. <laughs> <laughs> Draw what you imagine in your brain. Yeah. Draw a bird right now, now you know from how close memory. It is. Please draw, do this. Draw any bird. I'll from describe Troy's it. Memory. <laughs> from, dry, from my memory. 
Draw any bird from Troy's memory. <laughs> You're like Wingspan. Do it. <laughs> I know. As soon as you, oh, get out. Oh, oh my God, get Matthew's paying out. As soon as you said fish. and a pen. I was like, he doesn't even know what kind of bird. It's true. It is. All right. Uh, oh, here's the thing. You guys come downstairs to go head to uh, Gregor's. Not Gregor. I said Gregor too. I want you keep drawing while I do this. <laughs> this is so ridiculous. And you see Malkior. Uh, Malkior. Uh, Gerald. Gerald. Yes. Gerald of Riviera. Uh, you see Malkior, and he uh, accosts you, and he's like, um, how, how has your uh, your investigation going? Have you heard any 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 mention of Varna? Oh, okay. sorry. So Melchior, this is the guy we found on the way. Right, that you're right. suspicious of. He's looking for a friend of his, Varna, has a wooden, wooden septum piercing. You found out that Varna is an oak steward. You don't know what the relationship is, um, and uh, he seems very concerned. He came with you to Thinland's farms and just kind of has drifted off in the background asking his own questions. But now he's talking to you as uh, <laughs> Picasso over here. Joe is having a great time drawing <laughs> Bird. <laughs> 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 we were so confident. For the listening audience, we have provided Joe with a notebook and a pencil. And he is laughing sketching. maniacally as he sketches <laughs> draw a bird. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like I'm drawing a guy dancing, doing the YMCA dance. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> oh my god! This will be available for, uh, for auction. Uh, you know, we should auction that up. This will be a great use in our investigation. We should we'll just do. make a T-shirt of whatever you come up with <laughs> yes, now, like drawn exactly like that. Really <laughs> shitty. <laughs> uh, Var- uh, any, any news of Varna? Since we spoke last night before going to bed? Yeah, because I, 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 I knew you were going to speak with some townspeople. I, I don't, did, did anyone mention no, Varna none of them, that they'd seen? No, there was no mention of Varna. I spoke to people here and, and no one no one saw him as well. Uh, Stop laughing! <laughs> I'm so, oh, sorry. furiously drawing still. Like. But uh, it, it has become clear to me that this, this the idea of disappearing people is not uncommon here. There were these two people but um, from from town, but I, I get the sense that this is a, a common problem in the area. Yes. We've heard similar things. Who who have you heard that has gone missing? Uh, just just the, the two people um, that you said, but they said that there were other people that came into town looking for people and then left. So uh, while only two people from this town have disappeared, I think other people in looking for their lost loved ones uh, have maybe stumbled into Thinland's farms. What I'm saying is it seems like these disappearances are uh, an epidemic. So it may well it may well be true. We cannot say for certain right now. We are we have a few leads to follow. Um, perhaps let's schedule a time that we can come back here and compare notes. Yeah. Well I'll refer to the bird as it say nine, nine o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or I'll keep I'll keep asking around. Everyone is ultimately pretty friendly once yeah. you get to know them, even though they uh, seem standoffish. Maybe yeah. you could provide us with some more information about Varner. Perhaps if he was acting strange before he left or spoke of anything that seemed odd at the time. Yeah, let me let me get back to you. I'll, I'll think about that. Um, but just if you if you do hear his name mentioned, please. Uh, just, just let me know. Of course. We'll make note of it. Yes, of course. We'll, uh, no we'll, stone unturned. No, we'll reconnect at nine o bird. All right, I'll see you then. That'll make sense later. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now you want to go back to uh, Gerald's house. Yeah. Dunk, dunk, dunk. Do you again? Oh wait, on the walk though. He's still drawing this fucking bird. <laughs> on the walk. He's still <laughs> while he's <laughs> drawing. While he's drawing. Are you done? Let me know when we're at Gerald's house. <laughs> You're there. You're at the door. They're about I, to do a scene. I want to talk to Zephyr on the walk. Oh, okay. He's wow. going to keep drawing. Though. Keep drawing. <laughs> I'm sure you could improve. You can keep drawing. Wow, you haven't it's, even seen it yet. <laughs> it's only getting worse with each pass. <laughs> I was going to say, the more you... It's like a scab. Stop, stop picking at it. <laughs> so excited. Um, while we're walking, Asta had clearly noticed um, that... Zephyr was was grabbing the the urn, the the container, um, and they're walking behind everybody. And she turns to Zephyr and she says, 
I know what you're thinking. I I know what, what you're I know what you're all thinking. What what am I thinking? I didn't I didn't kill your friend. I didn't. But I didn't stop it either. And for that I am I am so so sorry, Zephyr. When I Sorry, go ahead. Well, she's not talking, but she's just like doing what I'm doing right now, which is like looking up in a way. Avoiding my eye contact. (laughs) Looking up in a way, like maybe still holding the urn and just like really tense and tight and just trying to breathe, listening to Utah. When I saw, when I first saw your group, it was by the Ayudara, the gates. I saw the Oak Stewards. I wasn't sure what your intentions were. I I wasn't sure what the Oak Stewards were doing. The Oak Stewards are good, kind people. I didn't understand. I'm sorry, I, I should have intervened. I should have stepped in. Your friend's blood was spilt due to my inaction. And for that, for that, it is unforgivable. And she takes out her katana and holds it out in front of her and hands the blade to Zephyr. Wow. What? What? What am I supposed to do with this? You can spill my blood. It's not just your fault. It's all of our faults. I mean, that that was an... In- that whole situation was a mess. I failed. We all failed. We all failed, Lucky. Lucky. Well, it is still tradition. You must spill my blood. Otherwise, I, I will not be able to forgive myself. And she thinks about it for a second and, like, slowly takes the katana and, like, looks at it. And I hold up my arm. Um, cut it off. Just like anywhere? <laughs> cut the fuck, I cut it off. It's like a little. Just like, like a. Like a cholesterol. <laughs> like a full. Cholesterol. Two handed swing. <laughs> Anything will do. Whatever you think is necessary. Roll the fingers for. Roll the head. You don't need to do this. I don't hate you. Just, we, didn't, we didn't have time. There's no time to like, this all just happened. I don't know you. What, now I'm gonna get to know you? And maybe you'll die? There it is. Get to know Talitha more? What if Buggles dies? What if we lo- we lose a lot of Brother Ramey? I'm Brother Ramey. <laughs> 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 it's nice to meet you, Jesus. <laughs> Worse. If he di- he dies, <laughs> that guy, that really guy, guy. The guy who can barely draw birds, <laughs> and the the dude, <laughs> not to mention he. <laughs> but, I mean, if you insist, she's having a little fun. She's not gonna. She's just a little boop. You just poke me. Just a little. How big is that katana? A little prick. <laughs> I'm further away. Uh, so you prick her, and she goes, prick. it is done. She takes the katana back, <laughs> sheaths it. <sighs> I feel better, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> we could wrestle. <laughs> yeah. I always did that with my siblings. Our parents said to get the yayas out. <laughs> <laughs> yayas. All right. I mean, it's, it's I would just love term. to practice yeah. with someone. Per, per, I can't not, practice with anyone perhaps else. Perhaps not now. They're getting Buggles is too small. Like far away. Yeah. I do have the Titan wrestler uh, feet. Oh no! So I can. I you can, can wrestle us. Yeah, I can grapple creatures uh, up to two times my size. Oh, we must wrestle. Uh, yeah. Okay. As you're chatting about wrestling in the town square, you do notice that the others have gotten ahead of you, and they are uh, starting to walk up the porch to Gerald's house. I'd like to see the bird. 
<laughs> I think it's time. I think we should see a bird before we go in the house. Joe, any, uh, anything we need to know about this? Yeah. Any context? <laughs> well, <laughs> I started off, and I wanted to make hey, sure hey. I captured, first of all. No excuses. I wanted to make sure I captured the species of finch. Okay. That was my first thing. I wanted to make sure it was recognizable as a finch to any common sure. viewer. Uh, and then I started worrying about the mapping and the clocking and stuff like that. Sure. So this, um, so here it is. <laughs> That's nine o'clock, all right. Angle it more towards me. That's a nine o'clock finch. That looks like a man a wearing a finch's costume. Oh. It looks like a man <laughs> dressed as Big Bird dancing it at a disco. He's been run over by a car. It looks like a man dressed as Big Bird who's been run over a car doing one of the chicken dances from Arrested Development. I was going to yeah. say the San Diego chicken doing like a tribal <laughs> rain dance. <laughs> <laughs> it is kind of chickeny. Yeah. yeah, looks better than I thought. Yeah. It does, you know, there's Good a, effort. There's a level of detail there that I was not expecting. It is horrifying looking. So I yeah, think I was that going for scary adds, too. I wanted to capture the unnatural. Yeah, like what happened to its eyes? Joe, yeah. you definitely have more artistic skill than I do. <laughs> yeah, that. for sure. I It'll make a, a great T-shirt. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to trace that and make a T-shirt out of <laughs> yeah. that exact. Do with the lime paper and everything. Yeah, yeah. The yellow shirt. Yellow. The lime paper. <laughs> just, it's so, a yellow a legal pad. Pencil, for the like, off to the side. <laughs> just, just make the shirt yellow and lined. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Don't sign it. <laughs> no, Don't ruin sign. it by signing it. I want to take it. this page and I want to lay it over the diorama from his journal. All right, so I, I'm going to kind of cut to the chase here because we've been uh, get meandering and just get you up into that room. It's like, yeah, sure, come on up. Um, <laughs> you want to role play? Kids, 17 minutes. Of his the kids are at school. Let's leave them out of this as well. <laughs> you bring bring him. He brings you upstairs and he's like, you know, have at it. And um, you compare your drawing, your memory of the 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 bird and and you know obviously you've drawn this but the wings are broken in such a way that they're broken in multiple different places so it's zigzags but the general feeling is 9 p.m. ish and a route and so you compare it to this diorama of the town and the surrounding area and you know where to go and you know when you have to be there and we'll be back after this break. <sighs> we go into the alcove on the back wall where we just see that chronometer and the only sound left in the room is that of a ticking clock. By now it's probably 12 30 we didn't talk about breakfast um i couldn't eat couldn't possibly eat where is it breakfast it is I this one. <laughs> it is uh within the forest to the north we were there it was where we were no no uh, it's like we you could see path. a path to do that but remember that path was circular it brought you back into town it was like she was expl exploring you know i just watched uh Willy Wonka, uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory with uh, the boys yesterday. It's like, you gotta go backwards to go forward. It's that same feel, like there's a circuitous route to get there, but now you know exactly where to get there. You have the piece of the puzzle. That... So it's short, walkable, north of town. Yep, north but of do, town. Do we, I don't know if we would be, have any way to know this, but was she like looking for a path to get to the spot or she was just looking for the spot? You almost get the sense that either she was wandering to try and discover it on her own, or she was being deliberately led mm. all around, maybe even tested. Mm. Mm. But this isn't like a ritual. That no. Like you have to go in this particular direction. And no, in it's fact. It's just a piece that we didn't have. This is pointing right And also there. this, sorry, this last, when we put this, the shape of the bird into the diorama where it belongs and find this spot, 
are any of her drawings or pathways in this area at all? Um, yeah, you can see one of her latest drawings, uh, if you were to consult with Gerald, kind of led close to that direction. Whether she was able to figure out the end pieces of the puzzle or not, you don't know. She never returned. Zero. Um, so yeah, is who who left the bird? And are, did they finish the puzzle? Mm-hmm. Are you going to get there and there's not going to be anything there? Um, some, did someone not, you, you just don't know, but you do have a location and a time. So is there anything you want to accomplish between now and, and 9 p.m.? And is it your intention to be at that spot? Yeah, this is my question. Is it, should we be planning on being there beforehand or do we need to arrive at 9? Or do we get the sense? I think we that's, should be that's, there beforehand. On time is late, Matthew. That's what I tell my Also, children. I'm almost tempted <laughs> to walk the path in the daytime. Just to see. Yeah, to get there. Sure. That's to scout idea. the area. What's there? Yeah. All right. Well, let's do lunch. Okay. Yeah, we'll do a... Uh, Typical early. Matthew. This is not yeah. Talitha. This is Matthew. This is Matthew. <laughs> Guys, we need to make sure we do lunch. <laughs> I don't want to be around any of you if you're hangry. <laughs> yeah. I also think, um, maybe Asta says this to Talitha. Talitha, do you think it would behoove us to look into Henry Buckets? The man who went missing, who lived alone, perhaps search his house? Did we never? Did we not do that? I thought we didn't. We go there? No, I think you spent your time. Uh, it was all Gerald. at Gerald's. Place. Oh yeah, we could. Let's. Yeah. Had a stop. Lunch, then Henry buckets, then out to the woods. Yeah. Yeah. If you um, go well, back, I guess and the big question is, do we want to take Malkior with us? Absolutely not. Yeah, I don't trust him. Okay. Um. All right. So, go back to the uh, inn or wherever you you, you find uh, older woman Ab- Abelina Choi because. You can't just go break it into this guy's house. I assume you want to like ask for permission, or yeah. you want to just no, no, no. I want to ask her. Sneak in. All right. We need a warrant. So that's yeah. per- maybe easier to ask for forgiveness. Permission? Well, that's up to you. I shouldn't lead. Well, you she that. seemed you she showed us to All right, that's Gerald. Right, yeah, she well, didn't can, care. We can uh, go to the man, and she says, "No, absolutely not. You can." <laughs> Damn, perfect. <laughs> I'm glad we'll you brought this up. Yeah. You definitely cannot do that. And if I find out you do, you will be imprisoned. No, she did. She's like, sure. Here's the keys. Uh, no, no. Um, yeah, that would be fine, I suppose, if you feel like it's gonna help your investigation. Uh, he lived alone. He was a bit of a shut-in. Uh, I'm not sure what you'll find. Uh, they say he was a, a collector of things, so you might have trouble finding anything in the, the mess that was left behind. We didn't spend too much time looking. He was an old man prone to wandering off. This time he just didn't come back. Um, but you're welcome to it. Uh, uh, yeah. May I ask, older woman, your abilities? Fascinating. My. I only relate to people. Can you direct this sense of truth that you have toward places? Objects? How, how do you mean? Animals. You seem to have this sense of truth if that's coming from a person. I'm curious if this is a ability you can direct toward an object or a place. Could you tell if a place was the epicenter of something terrible or something great? Uh, I suppose I could. I, Perhaps it would leave a resonance of some kind that you I, could sense. I did notice as a young girl sometimes being in places where I didn't feel right. Maybe my parents didn't tell me that those were places where uh, bad things happened. As I got older, I just sort of shrugged it off as uh, just mood swings. But uh, I suppose I do have that ability. Well, why don't you accompany us then to... <clears throat> His house. You all right, Brother Ramius? I'm all right. I'm not feeling well. I need to eat something. Is all. All right. Uh, I suppose I, I could. Um, when do you plan on heading out? Now, as soon as possible. After we, lunch. After lunch. Yes, sir. Of course. Eat something. I'll, I'll go uh, move some things around, and I'll be right back. She leaves, and Malkia comes up. Any news of? Fauna. No, no. <laughs> we'll tell you. We'll tell you if we hear anything. Guys, getting lunch. <laughs> oh my god. Did you, <laughs> did you happen? Brother Ramius is like, yes. We're, we're just like, all of us are like, 
Did you, you not you eat milk us? here? I haven't uh, eaten yet. Um, then you should join us. Uh, we were oh. going to eat on the go. We had to oh. leave. Okay. We already ate. We're the Ramius is looking. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? All right, table for five is ready now. Uh, or will it be six? <laughs> the Major D comes in. It'll be the, six. Of course, the saloon you can Major D. The saloon Major D. There was Western multiple saloon. tables that needed to be bust, <laughs> and now yours is ready. <laughs> <laughs> so we have an awkward lunch with Malcure. Yeah, six, six deer sausages, please. Yeah. Um, and we're like, all right, gotta go. And we leave. <laughs> oh, Malcure, did you think of anything? Um, I thought of many things, but in relation to... To the question I asked. Oh, to the question you asked. Silly dilly. Um, no, Vana, even though we were... Um, did you say you're best friends? Yes, in a way. We, we were very close, but Vana kept things uh, from me. His work um, in particular, I, I always assumed it was the work, but as um, time has passed and I haven't seen him, I wondered if perhaps there were other secrets. Did he work for anyone in particular that you could remember? A name? Um, he, he, he answered to the, the elders um, in, in Seven Arches. I, I don't remember... Uh, there were, there were many names. Did we ever ask him if he worked for Bolon? I can't remember. I don't think he knew Bolon. I think we did talk. He did. Okay, the, he didn't know Bolon. Right? He, he was not a guard. I think he we was asked not, if he was, he yeah. was not a guard. Part of that. I, I think we did. I couldn't remember. Okay. All right, should we get to the house? Uh, we must go. Oh. All right, maybe we can do lunch next time. T tomorrow, you mean? Again? We just did. Oh, we just, that was the whole lunch. Yes. yes. Wow, you weren't kidding. You really could have ordered more than a salad. I mean, <laughs> this, was, <laughs> this was the lunch. This, this was the lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Can we, we do separate checks, please? <laughs> um, all right, well, we'll, 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 we'll talk, um, we'll talk you, tomorrow. If you I'm, think of anything. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk around town and um, just uh, see if, if anyone knows anything. Don't disappear. Okay. Um, all right, so you want to go to Henry Bucket's house? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so you go, uh, Abelina takes you. Henry is uh, right up here. His, uh, his, his parents uh, uh, lived in this house with him until they uh, passed at an old age. And so uh, old Henry grew up in this home, and I think his parents suffered from the same uh, maladies uh, that he did. As I said, he was a, a collector, and so, um, you know, the house is a bit uh, unkempt. Uh, honestly, it's uh, been a, an item uh, the council and I have been discussing for a while what to do with the house, and frankly, we've, we've talked about just raising it uh, because it would be m more work to clean uh, than it would to just start over. But anyways, here we are, and she takes the key out, and she... Uh, opens the door and like as she pushes the door open she's just pushing like collected items everywhere he's a hoarder and uh it, there's a stink in there um of bodily fluids and uh it's dark and she's like uh, have at it I'm, I'm gonna go around to the back and open up the back door maybe this crosswind will uh, make the scent but you should be careful there could be uh uh, illnesses in here. Just be careful. I'm going to go with you to the back door. Sure. Um, come, come on. And she goes around to the back. We'll follow the two of you. Talitha is going to fashion like a like she's going to rip a piece of fabric from you know, like a from an old shirt or something and make a, a mask to help help deal with the smell. And then is it? Can anyone detect magic? Yeah, brother Ramius. Can you do it once you're in? Can you do detect magic for us? Mm-hmm. You go around back, and uh, she like pushes a gate, and the same thing. It's like there's so much shit in the gate; it looks like a junkyard back there. Um, and she's like, "Oh boy, buckets!" Uh, and it goes to the back door, opens it, same thing, pushes the door open. Horrible stench. She's like, "If, if there's anything I can help you with, I should say you were the one that asked. I do have an uneasy feeling, but <laughs> who doesn't?" Um, so. I know it's rather unpleasant in there, but could you accompany us? I suppose I could. I should uh, I should do this anyways. Normally I'd have one of our workers do it and report back to 
the council, but uh, sure. And she just kind of pulls her shirt up over her nose. Oh, oh. that's... Were you aware of Henry living like this? Everyone was sort of aware. Henry would come out from time to time and get some... Uh, oh, boy, that is, that is that shit. Is, that is a pungent, horrible smell. Um, Henry would come to the saloon and get some drinks from time to time, but he kept to himself and, and would sometimes just rave on and on about stuff, and people just left him alone, and eventually he'd come home. We assumed uh, the worst, but it's... it's it's worse than we ever thought. There is an illness here, it's evident. Yeah, well, it's crazy to think this could be uh, something passed down from parent to child. I don't know. I think that it could be related, though, to what we're... And then we'll meet up with the rest of you kind of in the middle of the house. Um, Your perception? He'll start with a detect magic. Yeah, let's do that first. You detect magic and you, you let it linger for a while and uh, you do detect uh, some magic coming from a cupboard in the kitchen area. Okay. Um, this Talitha, there's something over here. And he will walk toward the cupboard. Open it up and you find four elixirs of life. Nice. Uh, two lesser. Major. Major. Two, wow. Oh, nice. Wow. Greater? True? Did two, you say greater? true? Two lesser, two moderate. Guys. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, wait. Moderate. Whoa. Isn't moderate like 5d8 five, or something? 5d6. 5d6 plus That's 12. Great. That is wild. All right. So, sorry. Two lesser, two moderate. Two lesser, two moderate. Cool. All right. That's huge. I'll take a lesser. Maybe you guys take the moderates. Sure. I'll ta- happily yeah. take a moderate. Yeah. I'll take a mod. And you take a lesser? I'll take a lesser. You can heal yourself. Well, you know what? Why don't you just give them to me? Or at least. Oh, boy. Because look, at the end Flip of the this. day, right? Let's think about it. If I recall, Mike. My last character died because nobody healed me. Yeah. I'm like you were a frontline far- fighter now. I know, which means you should spend more time fighting and less time pulling shit out of your... What are you going to do? Throw it at me? Well, I can give it to you. You know what I mean? If you're down. You're always you so can also far get away. Belt. Unless I'm ranged. Do you want to okay. take, take the moderate? Take the moderate then. I don't know. I'm just trying to think. Of I don't know smartest. either. Take the moderate and Joe can think about it later. Okay. I'll have it for now. Okay. Um... All right, can I just do a perception around the house, see if I see anything interesting? I'd like to do one as well. Okay. Same. Same. Oh! Natural 20! I'm back, baby! 15. (laughs) 15. (laughs) It's 24. All right, so it is a disaster in here. There's stuff everywhere. There are little pathways, though, in the trash so that he could get around. You see yeah. there are very deliberate pathways. Um, you know, there's like his chair that had everything. There was a place to go to the bathroom. There was a place to like <laughs> hold food. I mean, it's just magazines, <laughs> whatever they had. Magazines. The Pathfinder equivalent, the Galarian equivalent of magazines, like books. Just the um, piles and, of Pathfinder journals. <laughs> piles of like <laughs> APs. <laughs> APs got like all a first edition APs. It was a GM. <laughs> GM with no players. You know how much knowledge you static. would have if you were living in Galarian and you had all the APs? Uh, <laughs> Farmer's so almanac yeah. from every year. Yeah. You'd be like the most powerful man. What I'm, I'm trying to say is it's not just books. They're like pamphlets and like things that you would be like, you'd walk into an inn and he, he collected the, like everything. Bulletins. Coupons. Coupons, yeah. Uh, free guitar lesson thing. <laughs> um, and... Uh, so that's what uh, Asta and Talitha notice. But Zephyr, maybe you weren't disassociating so much while they were examining the bird because you see a pattern in this nonsense. Oh. A pattern not only on the floor, but a, uh, a pattern in the way things are stacked and moved. You know, it's ultimately indiscernible. You think you'd have to spend a lot of time to try and figure it out. But if anything, the sort of prevailing thing I want you to think of is that, like this person was was trying to figure out something or being led to something as well. Interesting. And disappeared. So found it? Question mark. It's like uh, it's like Close Encounters. Of yeah. Encounters. Uh, yeah. I was thinking yeah, of Close yeah. Encounters a couple of days ago in relation to this. Yeah. It's Building like, the. Uh, the Devil's Tower with yeah, the mashed but, potatoes and everything. Yeah, it's like they can't uh, the model it. it. They're yeah, yeah. But that obsession, mm-hmm. that that unshakable kind of thought. 
but there's no there's no connection like this is what drives me nuts about this stuff like, <laughs> you say there's a pattern what's the pattern well, we don't well, know what the feel, pattern is it feels like it's like deliberate the, the well deliberate but also like the insanity of these people of maybe it's it's not a pattern that makes any sense but it but how do you then how do you know it's a pattern you can see just that, does it relate the way to that something? things are placed i guess it's kind of like well why is the hoarder placing things yeah in this particular way it the seems intention. like intentional. Yeah. 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 The stack of... Uh, well, I'm not really asking you. I'm asking you. Like, if the pattern, is, is it related to the diorama <laughs> at all? <laughs> he doesn't know the answer to this <laughs> question. <laughs> Sorry I think for trying. I think there's no what, answer. What I'm saying is, like, I get the concept. <laughs> what I'm saying is, like, do how does Zephyr see a pattern that is in any way relevant to what we're like doing? You, so I next, you go ahead. I feel like you guys are all, like, looking around the room, and I'm, like, looking at it as a whole, maybe. Like, that's how I imagine it playing out. You see right. certain things yeah. connect. If next to his, like, armchair is a stack of Galarian magazines, it's very deliberate, a, a little mini commode, very deliberate. But then there's things that are stacked on top of each other that, that don't make any sense. There's no reason. Mm -hmm. Whereas some parts of the apartment, like, there's, like, uh, sort of metal stuff all in one area. This, there's things stacked on top of each other that, that are unsafe, and you realize that there's... There's a there there. There's a reason for this. So he was seeking the same sort of thing that um, the wife was. But there's no information from this. Uh, no, because... It doesn't say anything about like the place that we're going. It, it doesn't well, that's point. What we just learned it doesn't even match up to the bird at all in a, in a shape, sir. Maybelines didn't match up to the bird either. Yeah. So you see just... very very similar discoveries that Maybelline found. But nothing in common. Uh, some, some in common, but like... You already have the final piece of the puzzle in yeah. the bird, you, th you hope. Yeah. I feel like this is the horror movie where everybody's drawing like black spiral circles and it's like, that's that means nothing but the fact that everybody who has you experienced know, this is doing it. You know what it's kind of like is, it made me think of the movie Prisoners. Mm. Where it's like he keeps drawing the maze, like every 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 one of these people that was involved in this thing, like they keep drawing the, the, the maze pattern. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you know? Like Westworld. Sure. Right? Like that yes. show Prison Break yeah. when he tattooed it. I don't on his see movies, back. but I see TV. So. Yeah, the maze in Westworld. So Westworld I think that you maybe that's. Have seen any of the movies we, we asked if you've seen? Westworld's a great show. I'm not saying it's that, but. I <laughs> it's just like a lot of time. I know. And your big complaint is the I time. Know. I, it's different. It's different. All right. Also, Westworld is not a great show. The first season's good. No, it isn't. I really like it. You didn't like it? I liked it. It's not good. I like that actress. I did not watch season three, but I liked I didn't watch season three. Either. I liked one and. Anyway, I'll do you think this two. is all we can Should get? we head out to the woods? Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> all right, so you're walking back. You see Malkior, and you guys duck down an alley so you can avoid him. This fucking and, uh, <laughs> you, uh, I've have... never seen Sydney dislike an NPC so much. <laughs> <laughs> you all hate him. It's not just me. Uh, I really dislike him. Evelina Choi um, wishes you luck, and uh, do you tell her what no. your plan is? Or no. just like, so what, what are you up to now? Uh, Still searching for your pockets. They're right here. Pockets. Your pockets of reality oh. Oh. shifting. I, I should warn you, many people have searched for those pockets, and those are the type of the people that, that don't come back, so just... Is that a threat? I'm kidding. <laughs> oh. Just just Josh and you, You seem Councilwoman. like kind enough people. I just take care of yourselves. <sighs> yeah. With any luck, you'll never see us again. <laughs> that is my hope. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you, just, uh, you are to me what Malkior is to you. Oh, really? <laughs> wow. Did you feel that oh, way before so we took sorry. you into the, into the shit house? Uh, yeah, making me do that has given me a different opinion of you. All right, you leave her and yes. you go into the woods around. You want to get there around eight thirty, eight forty-five. Eight. Uh, make sure we're there. Eight. eight. Hey, let's say eight. Really, if we get really. there by eight fifteen, that's okay. You also said earlier you wanted to check it out during the day. Yes, I'll yeah, say like, that you you know you you have that time to do so. You go out there and there is nothing there. Just woods, just woods, no, no clearing. Maybe like there's a, a hint of a clearing, uh, and you're like, well, hopefully this is it. Uh, but you you don't. There's I'd like nothing. to do a survival check. Yeah, just for any tracks or anything like that. I'll that and I'll I'll do perception. Mm -hmm. Um, well, the same exact thing. I'll do nature. Fifteen. Perception? Yeah. Mm. 20. Dirty 20. Dirty 20 survival? Survival. Well, the natural one on nature, so. Mm. Mm. You guys turn around. Asta is not there. Yeah. <laughs> she could not follow you into I the woods. I got stuck. <laughs> so and I finally killed Asta is standing here just like in front of a fallen log, just unable to... To get around it, don't know what to do. <laughs> you know, you're trying to look for patterns that aren't there. Yeah, <laughs> Zephyr and uh, Talitha, you do see some tracks, but they look like animal tracks, and there's nothing really that jumps out. 
Brother Ramius, you're really digging into survival, not just basic what you see with your eyes, and you do see a pattern. You see <laughs> you see <laughs> trees. Shoe prints. That's meaning. You see shoe okay, prints. So there are tracks that going every which way. Off from the clearing. <laughs> Like, like a, oh, oh, oh yes! maybe they're back. Maybe they're look at this. this is back. Talitha, there's no tracks in, but these tracks leading out. Perhaps someone came through from the other side here, right here. How French fresh are they? They are not very French. <laughs> French are they? Okay. <laughs> they look. <laughs> <laughs> it's an American boot if I've ever seen one. Are they boots or shoes as opposed to barefoot? Um, or or cloven hoofs? Boots. Boots. Heavy, a heavier person or a smaller person? Mm. Were they running or were they walking? <laughs> they were walking and uh, it's hard to tell their weight. And it's not like approaching and then dis disappearing, it's appearing. It like comes into this clearing and then leaves the clearing. Oh, so we see them. Yeah, yeah and if oh. you follow for a little bit, it goes like into the woods and then just stops. All right. Okay. It's rained, but they just stop. Mm. How fresh are they? A couple weeks, less than a month. Oh, less than oh, a month. Okay, okay. So yeah. these are old tracks. So let's uh, set up and wait in the clear or the the pseudo clearing until nine until night. Okay, you come back at nighttime. Nighttime. Let's just hang out. Well, can we just hang out? You yeah. Hang Should out we out tailgate? Yeah. 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 Bring a couple brewskis. Yeah. A couple folding chairs. I brought a bunch of deer sausages. I'm coming. Oh. <laughs> Can we <laughs> you you genius, you. <laughs> Can we wrestle while we wait? Oh. Uh, yeah, all, all right. I dump the sausages. Oh, threw them all on the ground. Okay. <laughs> Guys are eating deer sausage and wrestling for a few uh, hours. It's a real tailgate. <laughs> I'm going to pull Asta aside at one point. Okay, also Asta has been in her kitsune form like all day. Okay. Uh, while they're wrestling or eating deer sausages. Okay, Buckles, come on, let's go. Okay, and you're beating the shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Like I do, I have. I'm wrestling with you, nice. Where it's oh, like okay. it's technical, it's but nice. like we're not like actually hurting each so other. So it's like Boromir. This is not for you. It's for everyone else. Like Boromir <laughs> <laughs> sparring with the hobbits. And by everyone else, you mean every, everyone else, everyone else, everyone else. in this room and movies. watching. Oh, on YouTube. Gets remember, I did or see listening all those on movies. the podcast. So you remember Boromir remember. sparring with the hobbits? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you guys doing that? You pull Asta aside, Asta in her kitsune form. Um, Asta, may I have a word? Of course. I have a request of you. You are not what you seem. You would say that's a fair assessment. Sure, I've heard that many times, as I'm sure you have as well. That is what I wanted to talk about. Let's sit. Oh, okay. And she sits cross-legged on the ground. On the, just on the dirt. Mm-hmm. All right. And she like Come sit. Makes a little neat spot with her coat. You may know this about me, may not. Um, I am not what I seem either. Are you familiar with hags? You've encounter, encountered one in your travels. Asta squints her eyes. No, but I've heard of them. They're powerful casters, and their children are arrived at in an unsavory fashion, let's say. But for those of us who are child of a hag, um, there is a certain pull. I feel it, I felt it. It's getting stronger as we come out here. I've begun to question. I've approached my life with this knowledge and tried with an intense focus on rationality to complicate or mitigate that, but I feel it now. I felt it since, since the missing moment, really, but then when we encountered Bolon, I did something. I'm not sure. My request of you is this. Keep an eye on me. If I start to act in such a way that would hurt our friends, betray the party, your blade, you know how to use it? Sometimes. As we've seen. Yep. 
<laughs> it's or not. how they say a yep. roll of the dice, <laughs> if I can be of help, but I understand. You understand what I'm asking you? Of course. Do not wish that to be my destiny. And I, sh- I am choosing. I will not, I will not, will not go down the path of evil. Hmm. I understand. It's a difficult decision to make for yourself. You're very brave. I cannot ask the others. It would be... But you are... Well, there is safety in not knowing someone. They don't know, then. I have not told them. Well, perhaps we can both keep secrets for one another. Do you have the ability to create a potion of disguise? I... I have never done it. I'm out. I had a few left, and I can no longer... I can no longer look human. I'm stuck as this. Not that it matters, I guess, everyone knows, but... Sometimes it's good to be unknown. I understand. Uh, Allow me some time to study, and I'll survey my chemical materials and see what, what I might... I appreciate that. Of course. And this isn't to say that I do not want to be who I am. I love who I am. It's for others. Those who judge. You understand? I understand. This is nice. Yes, it is nice to discuss one's end, isn't it? Well, hopefully it won't come to that. I'm going to go wrestle. Okay. I'm going to stand up. Okay. (laughs) And you wait in the clearing, having conversations about worst case scenarios, wrestling, eating sausage, wondering if this is all just a wild goose chase. 9 p.m. comes. And nothing happens. You wait with bated breath, like... (laughs) But we need to walk the path, right? You wait for, like, Y2K, and just nothing. (sighs) Brother Ramius smashes his head into a tree. (laughs) (laughs) Perhaps the hands were off. Just wait. Asta says, I know one, I know two, I know three. Now it's ten past nine. Around quarter past nine, I imagine there's this feeling of like, what the fuck are we doing out here? There's Gorgas, there's other beasts. We should go back. When all of a sudden, you hear this humming sound. You look around the clearing and don't see anything. But off in the direction of where those footprints went, you see the air over there look uh, ripped open like a curtain. It's like a curtain that's been torn wide and all crumpled at the edges. And through the tear, you can see on the other side what looks like another forest at twilight. It's black trees as thin as... uh, the cardstock cutouts in a pop-up book. Everything beyond the tear looks completely drained of color, just painted in like shades of shadow. And from the point where this tear touches the ground, you see a footpath winding beyond into this scene. What do you do? Well, we've all passed through one kind of portal. Shall we? Let's go. Yeah. Brother Ramius? He's just frozen in fear. He's also terrified. Bleeding from where he banged his head. His head. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps that was a bit hasty. <laughs> a lot of leaf. Ten minutes seemed like a long. <laughs> Fifteen minutes. An eternity. 
He's looking through at that land and is sure that that it's very real that he would never come back. He would go through there and die. And that's all he can think about. But he sort of shakes out of it. Well, this is what we came for. What we pledged to do. We don't know how long it'll be open. If we don't go, we won't know. No, we must. Buggles, are you okay? Um, yes, I suppose. Uh, you're all coming too, yes? Of course. Yeah, it's just you. It grabs Zephyr's hand. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's just you. We put it in there, Buggles. Oh. Right, no, wait, no. <laughs> Report back. <laughs> Throw the boy. Brother Ramius, please. I think we all have to go. Of course. Just stay close, Buggles. All of us, stay close. And Salitha will, can I do a, can I investigate the tear? Is it, I'll just kind of like walk up to it. Walk up to it and like yeah, look yeah, behind it. Yeah, you look behind it and you just see the forest that you're in. There's no back to it. Um, 16 perception. You look through and now that you're closer, everything, um, while devoid of color, you can see color within, but it's just so muted and dull. Um, but there is a faint color. You see mountains in the distance and other, like, ruins. And just this little pathway that does not exist in your world, just right where this tear touches the ground. Does it, apart from the lack of color, does it otherwise look, like, geographically like the forest we're in or like no, a completely different forest? Completely different world. All right. Shall we? Who steps through first? Delitha will. Second? I'll go second. I'm, I'm with you. I'll go next. Shove Brother Ramius in and then run and away. Brother Ramius looks back at the town in the distance. One last look. Looks at the footsteps that walked through before. And then watches all of them pass through. Just keep our guide us. And steps through you step through last and all of you turn back and see now that you're in this place a new tear in this place that looks back on the world you were just in and as brother Ramius steps through and turns to look as well you watch as it just shimmers fades and disappears <laughs> And we'll see you next week. <laughs> Here we go. How do you get back? <laughs> Nobody can get back yet. We're so playing yes. the game. This is our new life in the black and white forest. Yeah, <laughs> that's scary. Cool. The house will be nice. I'll be servants in Nighthold forever. <laughs> <laughs>